Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. I cannot believe I'm saying these words. This show's supposed to be on hiatus. <laughs> if you look at my release dates for my videos and my view counts, you will see that I start making videos for Gothic Homemaking around the beginning of the Halloween season, which, as we all know, is June. <laughs> Well, the video counts, the view counts start going up and they crescendo around Halloween, but then after Halloween they sharply drop. So to save myself a lot of hardship and a lot of heartache, I go on hiatus from the end of December until half a ween at the earliest. But I just came from an incredible Halloween theme show that was so amazing that I just had to drag myself out of retirement to make an episode about it for you. I went to the Trans World Halloween and Haunted Attraction Show in the Midwest and it was nothing short of phantasmagorical. Take a look. Submitted for your approval, an American Airlines flight left LaGuardia Airport on a cool February morning, headed for St. Louis. It would only be in the air for two hours, but when it landed, it would do so. Smack dab in the middle of Halloween. Upon landing, I checked into the beautiful Magnolia Hotel, just one block away from Transworld's Halloween and Attractions show. Every year, this show brings out thousands of people and, um, werewolves who love haunts and Halloween. I walked through the front door and went right to the booth of Little Spider Creations. I climbed their beautiful tower for a bat's eye view of the convention, where I saw all things Halloween. Dark gods, you could really go broke, or should I say, ho, watching the money get sucked out of your wallet on these amazing props that are just to die for. Every year, purveyors of haunt and Halloween items set up their booths at Transworld. Like carnival barkers, they try to scare up business from the attendees. And who are these attendees? For the most part, they're owners of haunted attractions who haunt these halls, looking for deals on props, sets, special effects, and more. It's a trip. Speaking of trips, when I saw this guy, I thought I was on shrooms. Then I realized the shrooms were on him. He was at the booth of our friends Dapper Cadaver, who I featured in Gothic Homemaking before. Dapper Cadaver owner BJ Winslow told me he's exhibited at Transworld 13 years and that it's the best place to network with the haunt community. He's dead right. I'm really glad I got to hang with him at his booth. Once being released, I set out to look for sets, like these that could be yours if you have ghoulishly good taste and don't mind coughing up the cash to Night Scream Studios. I really appreciate that they set up their booth like a miniature haunt, so you have an opportunity to walk through and see how all of these components work together to create an eerie environment. No bones about it. The special effects lighting and sound effects really brought this place to life. Or is that death? Suffice to say, whether your haunt is a professional one or in your garage on Halloween, if you came here looking to buy the walls for your haunt, you'd be set. There were also costumes like these creepy moss suits, which you might be liking. There were murderous killer clowns, biohazard brides, sinister Santas, and rabid rabbits. But there were also gothic Victorian costumes for your vampire haunt, and steampunk looks that were elegant and not the least bit fishy. At the booth of Midnight Mayhem Apparel, they had all the costumes you need for your characters to properly haunt a haunt. And while they specialize in clowns, it was clear they weren't afraid to get their hands dirty. Or is that bloody? Making, well, whatever the doctor ordered. At the Chaos Effects booth, there were props that were sure to take your breath away and blow your mind, like this belt made of human nipples. I'm so glad they kept me abreast of these gory props, and let's face it, some of it might make your customers lose their stomachs. They also had this crazy spider baby pet that made me bug out. If your actors need a pet, boys and gargoyles could find more at a booth down the way, which were wonderfully horrible. And I think we can agree, fantastic. I have to give props to Creature Core for illuminating how to get ahead in this crazy Halloween business. At Black Martin Brands and Amy's Abominations, they had deep fried hands that looked finger licking good. As an added source of revenue for haunts, these folks make and sell horror-themed merchandise that can be sold in a gift shop that can sometimes be found at the end of a haunted attraction. 
or maybe at their snack bar. At Brutal Images, they had these incredible pickled punks that were so realistic, they left my mouth ajar. Now, truth be told, they looked kind of pale and sickly, but fear not, because at Transworld, they also have all of your makeup needs. In fact, you can say that at Transworld, they've got you covered from head to toe. There were booths selling face paint and booths selling theatrical contact lenses. And there was lots and lots of body paint. And everywhere you looked, there were talented makeup artists showing off their latest tech. Or is that Aztec? There were also seminars throughout the weekend, including one on set painting by the talented Brian Dembski. This artist has gotten ahead by having a mind for faux finishes. And there's one thing you can be sure of, he's certainly not rusty. I had died, I mean, I almost died, seeing how incredibly realistic these finishes were. I was speechless. There were vendors selling atmospheric effects like the ubiquitous fog that all haunts should really have. And there were these smoke-filled bubbles that were really a gas. I have to admit, they really brought out my inner child. Or is that my inner goblin king? They were just too much fun. But my favorite atmospheric effect was this smoke ring throwing cannon. I have no idea what I'd use it for, but I felt I had to have it. Honestly, it was running rings around the regular smoke. Also exhibiting were haunts like 13th Floor. They had built this huge facade on the showroom floor that was fantastically phantasmagorical, and it loomed like a, well, like a haunted house over many of the other booths. Also there were Terror Town from Cincinnati, Ohio. I saw these skulls in their black market and knew I had to buy some from their friendly staff. I'll probably use them in a future DIY episode. Pray tell when that might be. Speaking of DIY, there were other Halloween YouTube creators there, including two of my favorites, Jamie and Jay of Wicked Makers. It's always such a thrill to run into other Halloween-obsessed creators and share our excitement for Halloween and the macabre. But it wasn't all clowning around at Transworld. There were also booths offering business solutions, like online ticketing. Let's be honest. You're not watching this episode because you care about online ticketing solutions. So let's get to the good part. Here are the five best things to see at Transworld. It's not Halloween and it's not a haunt without some creepy, ghoulish monster masks. And let me tell you, at this place you could really go hog wild over the selection. But which to choose? They had every manner of monster imaginable. These countless booths were just killing it and pumping out design after design, each booth running wild with their own take on the Halloween mask. As a monster kid, I felt like it was Christmas. I'll bite a creepy Christmas, perhaps. No fooling. At every price, there was everything from classic horror and Halloween looks to these extremely detailed modern silicone masks, sure to make your eyes bulge. There were masks so scary they'd make you want to cover your eyes. With everything from demons to demigods, there was an absolutely monstrous selection of jaw-dropping designs to drive you mad and impress even the biggest fish in the haunt world. My old friend Billy Messina of Netherworld Haunted House in Atlanta was blown away by the selection we saw at Immortal Masks. And for good reason. These masks were smoking. And this lava mask is so fire, I can only give it a glowing review. At Original Sin Design, there were these life-size figures that were so realistic, they'd be sure to make your customers lose their minds. They were painted and dressed and detailed to a bloody T. And since they're molded from real people, they're absolutely lifelike. Or is that dead-like? They were also crushing it at rib effects, and over at Morbid Monstrosities, I got so giddy, I could have puked into someone else's mouth. 
Your customers will go ape over puppets that can be puppeteered in real time and create a very personal experience, especially with designs like these that are so ingenious and think out of the box. Puppets like these can add a really hairy and dynamic experience to your haunt. I thought these were really sweet, but then, what else can you say about a possessed bucket of cotton candy? And this meatball guy who tried to take a bite out of me was rather saucy. Of course, if you want your monsters to come to life without the use of a human puppeteer, you could always give pneumatics a shot. At Fright Props, you could find everything you need to build your nightmare. All of these servos are designed to serve you, to help you design an experience that will make your customers flip their lids from whatever crazy effects you choose to create. Obviously one of the movers and shakers, Fright Props was kicking things up at this booth to help you get a leg over on the competition and help you reach out and grab some of that haunting market share that I know you adore. I'll show myself out. At this booth, you could see some of that technology kicking into gear. With just a little bit of silicone and a little bit of ingenuity, you can really cook up a haunt that will keep your customers stewing in fear and twitching with excitement. I took a spin around the showroom floor and at the booth of Gore Galore, I saw a giant animatronic that I can assure you was no bore. Next at the booth of Beastcraft, I felt like I had walked into a cannibal buffet and I must admit I instantly wanted all of these friends to join me in the lair. I'm in the middle of a cannibal buffet. me that way. So if you really want to know what's eating me, it's the man eaters on the coast of Barbary. It's the man eaters on the coast of Barbary. It'd be so much fun to have in my home, but I'd be sad when they go, because I was just batty about them. Next up, I had an electrifying experience at the Distortions booth where things were really heating up. Some of their animatronics are absolutely shocking. And I can tell you that their customers had a hard time containing themselves from all of the excitement at seeing so many animatronics that were out of this world. This is the alien containment unit that Jamie from Wicked Maker said she loved so much. But what you don't get from this video is that it actually spits at you when it flies out. It's as wet as it is wild. Distortions is truly one of the best companies for animatronics, and I have to say that what I love most about them is the aesthetics. The sculptures are really great, and the design of their characters is really unique, but they're still rooted enough in classic horror to create a traditional Halloween experience. It's no surprise there were so many people trembling with excitement at their booth. This is clearly a company to keep an eye out for. And that brings us to the number one thing to see at Transworld, the Dark Zone. This is the place where companies like Scare Factory get to display their most impressive animatronics in a dark space so that you can see what they'd look like in an actual haunt. I took one step into the Dark Zone and I felt like I was instantly transported to the Day of the Dead.
Next to Scare Factory was the booth of poison props that had animatronics that would really suck you in. If you're into all things grim, I'm gonna wing it and guess you would really freak out over all of these animatronics that they had on display. Not one to leave you hanging, Poison Props just keeps coming up with creatures that are popping up on the scene, ready to make you scream. Not to be cryptic, but this possessed ghoul really left me speechless. I'd become mesmerized by her gruesome movements when suddenly I was startled by this bloodthirsty zombie who was all the rage. I'm not gonna lie. I came across many things at Transworld that day that I'm not going to be able to unsee. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that. Well, that was my very first Transworld experience. I hope you enjoyed it. Isn't it amazing? I, I can't begin to tell you what a big, goofy, jack-o'-lantern grin I had when I walked into that convention center in the middle of February and was surrounded by Halloween masks and animatronics and decorations. There's only one thing better than walking into a room full of Halloween, and that's when it's not even Halloween. <laughs> now, to be completely honest with you, the reason I went to Transworld is because, as you know, as the uh, Martha Stewart of Macabre Homemakers, I have a growing line of spooky merchandise and Halloween home decor, and I was wondering if I shouldn't perhaps be doing Halloween trade shows. So I went to Transworld not really knowing that it was primarily geared towards haunted attractions. So when I got there, I thought, oh, do I fit in here after all? But let me tell you something. I was stopped by so many people who watch Gothic Homemaking that I realized I'm amongst my people. <laughs> so I will most definitely be back to Transworld next year. I may even exhibit there next year. I hope to see you there, and I hope to see you here on Gothic Homemaking when we return probably sometime around half a week. See you then.